Welcome to Guns Gear Network, everyone. Appreciate you tuning in. Today we're going to discuss repairing and fixing aluminum and aluminum alloy type materials on firearms. Stay tuned. Welcome back guys, appreciate you tuning in. So today we're going to discuss repairing or kind of fixing uh, aluminum or aluminum alloy type firearms and uh, some of those include like this Sig Sauer 1911-22, the uh, GSG 1911-22s, the Ruger Wrangler comes to mind, uh, even your ARs that are made of aluminum, uh, even like your four ends and things like that that you may have switched out to an aluminum style end or the receivers or anything like that anything that is not a steel so there's two types of metals that you're going to deal with when you're trying to touch up or finish something uh, and repair it it's going to be steel and it is usually you're going to use some type of bluing cold bluing is the most easiest method they have it in pen form they have it in bottles and there's a few of them that uh, i recommend this brown ales oxa blue i think is what it's called uh is really good today we're going to discuss specifically aluminum so i recently picked up this 1911 22 by sig sour it's made by gsg and the finishes on these are pretty decent but if you shoot it enough you're going to start marring the finishes and uh, I've already dis disassembled, cleaned, and kind of repaired a few little issues that I saw. But I wanted, I left a few on here to show you uh, the results you can get out of this Aluma Black by Birchwood Casey. So we're going to take a look at that. So you're going to need a few things to do it with. You're going to need some Q-tips. And I use a simple paper towel and I do dampen it just a little bit with some water to help dilute it. Because um, you don't want that uh, stuff's pretty toxic. And um, you don't want to use like a gun, like a rag you're going to use to maybe clean this later or something like that. I use these. They're disposable. Just throw them away once you get done. So on the bottle here, it says aluminum black, metal finish, touch up, scratched, and marred areas quickly. So this right here is going to cover up some of those things. We're going to take a look here. My son's helping me with the camera. Say hello, son. Hi, guys. So if you can see this right in here typical wear areas and this one had wear it was an, it's a used firearm that i found locally at a gun shop i've been looking for one of these and i found one today and uh, pretty happy i found it and the um uh it had it had a few marks on it and which is you know going to be normal with wear and tear on a used firearm uh but the problem is with some of these it's going to be hard to fix unless you kind of know what you're doing and it had some wear around here it had some, you know, little marks here and there, whatever. And this is, I don't think it's painted. I'm not real sure what this finish is. It's probably some type of paint of some sort. Uh, but because you get down to the bare metal, which is then that aluminum alloy type material, you can darken it and it'll blend it in better and you won't be able to see it as bad. So you want to take this, I've already shaken the bottle, you want to shake it up, and um, sometimes people will take this and pour it into a different container. The reason you do that is because you can contaminate your whole bottle. Now, I'm pretty lazy and when it comes to some of that, and I don't do it that often. Uh, a lot of times I just dip it, and then if it gets contaminated or whatever. I've never had that big issue, but some people do recommend, some of your gunsmiths will recommend pouring it into a, uh, a separate container before you start using it and then dump that out after you and don't dump it back in your bottle. So let me preface this by saying any historical type uh, collectible guns, you don't want to go overboard with any touch-ups. Any of that stuff can devalue the firearm if it's been refinished or anything like that. Touch-ups are, you know, still a little controversial when it comes to the collector world, but a lot of times if they're small touch-ups just to make it look better, um, give an example, let's say you've got a uh, a Winchester, you know, lever action rifle of some sort, and on the barrel, uh, there might be a rubbed spot uh, where the bluing came off. Maybe it was rubbing uh, on something in transport, and it's got a little bare spot. Touching that up is not the end of the world. You just got to be careful with that, um, with touching up too much on, on those type collectible firearms. So like I said, we're going to take a look. If you look right here, there's some spots I left. I've already done some touch up on here right there pretty simple process guys dip this 
Kind of saturate it pretty good. I always tap it off so it ain't dripping all over the place. And I'm going to show you as we do it, you just simply rub over it and just kind of pull it up on it. And if you get um, away from the actual repair itself up onto the metal, it shouldn't hurt anything, to be honest with you. I don't mind kind of rubbing it in like that. Let it sit. If it starts, you know, kind of getting a little carried away, you got too much on, just use your uh, paper towel, wipe it off. And there's a spot right here I'm going to hit too. I'd already done it earlier, and I just noticed it in a little better light down here. It's not as uh, black as I would like to see. So I'm going to do that. And while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and look at any spot that I might could find. These gun shops, if they would take the time to actually clean their firearms and do any touch-up, they would probably bring a little more money, to be honest with you. Because this one looked, anytime you've got uh, silver marks shining through a black finish, it's going to automatically detract from the look of the firearm. And um, that was one of the first few things I noticed was those marks. And if they would have covered them up, then it would have probably been able to, you know, either sell it easier or get more money out of it. All right, so that's pretty much getting to the point of being dry and black. So again, where it's damp, I'm going to take and rub it off like this. Then you can check it. So it's still not uh, staying on real good. I'm going to go back on it. Hit it again. You want that uh, to soak into that metal and, and start turning it black. There's a little rub spot right here on this uh, trigger guard. And we'll go around it like that. And you can literally just take this stuff every time you see one, a spot like that, and just keep touching it up and... Um, fixing any of those little spots that you might see on one of these. Uh, again, the Ruger Wrangler is uh, an alloy type uh, gun. You can, I fixed one of those, I accidentally, a brand new one, and when I got it out of the box, I noticed there was a little ding on the cylinder, and I was able to take this and cover that up. So you can kind of pat it dry, check it again. So let's take a look. I'm going to pat this dry instead of try rubbing it. So I made a boo boo, guys. If you look where it says Sig Sour, I darkened the S. I sure did. I had to figure out if I can uh, get that back or not. I don't know if it actually took the words off. It almost looks like it took, no, it didn't take the words off. If you hold it at an angle, I can probably fix that with some white. Uh, that ain't that big a deal. But if you look, so just keep that in mind. You just learned from my mistake. Don't let it get down into all this uh, writing here. So just be careful of that. And I'll go back and be able to fix that probably. But there you go, guys. Clean that up over here. There you go. So it's all back now uh, the way it was. Uh, I had to work on fixing that Sig Sauer logo there. I don't know. If I turn it at an angle, I can definitely see the Sig Sauer portion. I don't know. It must be, I don't know if that's paint in there or what that is. But I'll figure it out and get it uh, fixed back. I'll put it under a loop and see what that is. So but anyway, guys, like I said, be able to touch up firearms with something like this, uh, the Aluma Black by Casey Bir or Birchwood Casey, or the Brown Ales for your steels uh, type material uh, firearms. But anyway, guys, guys, appreciate you tuning in. If you got any questions, post those below. And as always, like, share, and subscribe. Bring another video shortly. Have a great day.